all around you, all around this room, a sea of faces, ignorant, vicious faces, faces of people that have come to watch you die, faces that should be familiar, human faces, and all of them are completely unrecognizable. They don't see you. They see their long-awaited reward for living cowardly and conservative lives. The world owes them your death, and they are going to get it. If you're anything like me, the most you knew about Joan of Arc was she was a martyr, a religious figure. There is so much more to her story than that. After leading the French army to victory, Joan of Arc was taken prisoner, where she was then put on trial for having radical and different ideas. Joan of Arc burns in The Second Coming of Joan of Arc by Carolyn Gage. So, how do you torture a woman? Well, you can tie her up to a rack, rip her bones apart, or you can tear apart her mind from her body. That's what I do. The church had so much love for my soul that they just had to burn my body. In the courtroom, they were going through my mind, but in my cell, they were after my body. My cell was dark and cold. I was never allowed to leave it except to go to the courtroom. It wasn't all that different from all the other places I had been held prisoner, except for one key detail. I wasn't allowed to be attended by women. I had a special detail of guards, five of them, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They never got tired of cruelty. They did everything but rape me, but that wasn't out of any respect for me, no. You see, my virginity had been an issue at the trial, so after the court examined me, the guards didn't dare touch me because it would have been tampering with evidence. My trial lasted five months, focused on two issues, my voices and my clothing. The church wanted me to renounce my voices and to wear a dress. After five months, here are the charges they came up with. One, disobeying my parents. Two, wearing men's clothing. Three, making a vow never to have sex with a man. Four, listening to voices on the sole basis that they brought me comfort. Five, believing in those voices. And six, refusing the church's right to judge my actions. So they take me out of my cell, and there's this little platform for me. And over there, well, over there is the executioner's part, waiting to take me to where the stake is. So while they were reading my sentence, I broke down. I renounced my voices, and I promised to wear a dress. What happens to women when we do finally break? Are we released, forgiven? I have seen all kinds of women give in in all kinds of ways and in every single incident. Listen to me! The abuse increases. There is no mercy for women because our crime is our sex. So I confessed. And like most women, I expected some reward for surrendering myself. I wanted to be moved to another prison with other prisoners and with female attendants, but that didn't happen. Instead, I was moved back to my old cell, back to my five guards, only now I was wearing a dress. On Saturday, the guard led an Englishman into my cell. I stood up to see what he wanted, and then wham! I'm on the floor. And he starts kicking me in, in the back, in my legs, and suddenly he's on top of me and he's pulling up my dress with one hand. If I had been wearing men's clothing, he would have had to use both hands. He would have had to untie 40 knots, undo two sets of lacings tied to the doublet. I would have made him pay for it. You better believe it. But instead, he's got up my dress with his one hand, and with his other hand, he's smacking my face back and forth. Wham, wham, wham! And then suddenly, Suddenly he's taking out his, he's taking out his, and here's my body, my body, me, it's me, and he's, he's slamming into me, and I can't focus, and my nose starts to bleed, and he's talking between his teeth in some language that I can't even understand, and then suddenly he's back on top of me again, and he's kicking me in the stomach and in my uterus, and then he's gone. There I was, raped, battered, broken. The 
game was over. After five months, it was finally over. The next morning, I woke to one of the guards taking my dress off. He told me that I could either wear my old clothes or go naked. But you have to see, it was against the terms of my penance ever to wear men's clothing again. I begged him to give me that dress back, but he refused. Finally, I put on the old clothes. And then the miracle happened. I had been raped. I had denied my voices for three days. I had not known who I was. But when I put on my men's, no, my human clothing, I came back to myself. I looked those girls right in the eye, and I told them that no one had made me wear them. So long as I had to live in a man's world, I was going to dress like a man. Then they asked me if I had heard the voices since my confession, and I told them that yes. As a matter of fact, I have. And my voices told me that every single thing I have ever done in my life, I have done well. And it was a lie to say anything different. So, on Wednesday, they take me out of my cell again. This time, the platform and the stake are in the same place. I guess the guards didn't want to risk another confession. I remember the faces that bothered me so much a week before, I didn't even notice them. They hadn't changed, but I had. I had been raped. They read me my sentence. Two guards shoved me up onto the platform. Now, typically, the executioner kills the victim so that they don't actually have to burn to death. But in my case, the stake was so high so that everyone could see. He couldn't reach me to do his job. It was a long time between the time they lit the fire and I lost consciousness. I realized what a fool I had been to crown some man king as if he had some divine right to rule. What a fool I had been to lead one army of men out against another, as if it makes any difference who won. What a fool I had been to follow a church led by men who only worship themselves. We will not reform them. They will martyr us. We must fight for our own causes, women's causes. We must clothe ourselves with self-respect. And we must arm ourselves with a finely tempered rage. And we must listen to the voices that we women alone can hear. 